Dennis Davis. I came into being chief in 1986 and left here in 1999, uh, so 13 years in Cheshire. I came to Cheshire in 1971 from the Midlands to join headquarters in the fire safety department. Um, I'd been uh, an operational junior officer and got promotion to station officer. Came to join the, the group that really was looking after schools and education, that side of the, the business. I originally, I, I think I, I originally I wanted to go into the Navy. I wanted to be um, something like a deck officer or something like that in the Navy. Um, and then I left school with the intent of maybe proceeding down that route, um, but never did it, <laughs> just didn't do it. And then I applied for a job as a police officer, a police cadet, not an officer, police cadet, and they refused me. They refused me in my old town. Um, I don't know why, but they refused me. And I think that, that prompted me to look at the fire service. I thought, well, oh, if the police don't want me, maybe the fire service will want me. <laughs> so off I went and that was it. And I, I, I have loved every minute of, I don't think I've ever regretted a moment of it. It's ethics, it's role, it's, um, it's activity, it's variety. Um, the fact that you're actually doing some good for people. Um, it, it, it embodied, I think, all the good things that I liked, and it was active, you know. Um, and you could actually see the results, the results of your achievement, you know. I mean, it didn't matter what it was, whether it was relatively modest, uh, whatever you'd done, you could see it. And you knew it would make a difference. It just turned out that I'd also got two generations before me who'd been in the fire service on my mother's side that I didn't really have a lot to do with. Um, but my, my grandfather and an uncle had been in that and my brother-in-law, he was killed in, um, in the job on duty. Um, but, um, you know, he followed me in a way and my son followed me. So I think it just sort of, it must fit our the way we are as individuals particularly but it is about all those things it is about all those things my favorite story of cheshire was that it was a quality fire brigade when i joined it uh, i came from the, uh, the midlands as i've said and all my kit was second hand when i joined which was not uncommon um, and when i came to cheshire they literally threw it all in the bin everything the only thing i retained was my silk which was a thing you wore around your neck to separate the serge uniform from your neck. Uh, in terms of uniform, there was a little bit of a problem. They couldn't find a, a jacket to fit me, and then they found one, an officer's jacket that was, and funnily enough, it was the chief's, a <laughs> chief officer's jacket, and they took the uh, badges of rank off it. That was the first thing they did, and they gave it to me. So I started off with a chief's jacket the day I came to Cheshire, but I lost it within about 10 minutes. <laughs> That's how I started off, yeah, and went into the uh, department at headquarters. And as I say, my, my principal role was schools. And I virtually uh, visited every school in Cheshire, signed off most of the plans of a lot of them. We were one of the largest counties then. I think that's worth remembering. I mean, counties like Lancashire and Cheshire were big county fire brigades, Yorkshire. You know, these were big county brigades and very well organised because they, their original chiefs, like Archie Warren in Cheshire, had been regional commanders in the war. So they, they were used to organising big outfits, big organisations. And Cheshire was one of that, that group, really. I'd never even thought of myself as a chief. Um, I just, uh, I just worked my, my job, did the best I could, um, and seemed to get promoted. Uh, it, it, people obviously saw more in me uh, and sort of helped in that sense by promoting me. But, but no, I, I never had a, a career plan to be a chief. And I was, to be fair, moving fairly quickly, because in those days, I mean, I, when I became a chief, I was 39, something like that, which was quite young for a chief at that time, yeah. Um, so yeah, it, it, was, it was progressive. You come at it with, with a, a backpack full of ideas at one level, 
and no idea at the other. And what I mean by that is the one big thing you come into, I'd had a relatively short period uh, as a, an assistant and as a deputy. And as an assistant in Cheshire then, you, you didn't do a lot with politics. A little bit more when you were the deputy. Um, and that was the bit I didn't have a lot of knowledge about how the politics of the process worked. I was effectively an operational officer. I understood operations, I knew what we needed. Technically, I knew how we could advance, all those things, that was fine. But of course, part of the job, a serious part of the chief's job, is being able to find the resources, to get people on side, to convince the community. And if you're convincing the community, that means convincing your councillors, your, your members of the authority. And uh, I hadn't got a great insight into that at all. So at one level, I was very clear how we could move and change. And on the other side, I wasn't too sure of the mechanism, the process. And that's what I had to learn. I had to learn it quite fast. One of our, our, our big uh, events, and ev in terms of how we change things, I think, is that I wanted to get people to think for themselves. And part of that was getting them to be able to express themselves. And part of that was getting their managers, the officers and everybody else, to let them express themselves. And I don't mean that as a, a sort of a, a fifth columnist saw that there was greater pressure or anything. It wasn't like that at all. But it, but it took time for them to be able to really blossom, if I can put it that way. And when they did, they really did. Uh, and the success of Cheshire, I think, under my tenure, was the people. They were able to express themselves. They took responsibility for what they were doing and they became very, very effective advocates for the service, what, the, what it was all about. So that was one part of it. The second part of it is we turned to the community in a big way. We, we realised quite quickly that we couldn't alter the, the numbers in terms of incidents and so on unless we got the people on side, unless the community was on side. So our community effort was, was serious and and strong. And that took a bit of doing because a lot of firefighters at that time weren't that keen on community fire safety, as you might call it now. Um, they, they were quite happy with operational response, but you know. So, so that was it. And yet in the northwest, the northwest of England was probably one of the strongest sort of advocates throughout the country for community fire safety. I mean, the programs that Manchester led with, uh, Lancashire got involved with, you know. Really, really strong, powerful programmes about trying to get the community involved, smoke detectors, you know, the whole, the whole process. So that was another really strong element, I think, of our tenure. And we took that on as well into, into youth, you know, into, in a big way. You know, we got a cadet scheme going, we got the Prince's Trust going. And I think that really worked. That really did work. And then we were able to manage some of the, the difficulties like money because the money wasn't always there. And we, 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 we learned to be able to use our money very wisely because of that. And one of the first things I, I can remember having big arguments about releasing funding down to lower levels where people could spend it more locally, you know, and, and get the best bang for your buck, if you like. So those sorts of changes, I think, happened. And we, we had, at the time, authority members who really, really supported us, really understood what we were about, what we were trying to do. And that was the other side of it, I think. You know, they were up for it. They were really pleased that this was that sort of... A, and, and I always felt we were punching way above our weight, you know. We were on every national event, every committee. You name it, we were there, you know. I mean, we really were. Um, and we, re we had some good people, excellent people doing it with us. I tried to say very approachable. You know, so anybody could stop me and talk. I used to visit the stations all the time, sit down, talk at watches, see what they wanted, you know. Um, I had a slight advantage because I'd been with the brigade for, uh, as a young officer and come through it all. I knew it. I knew people very well. I knew the circumstances of how places operated and so on. So I had that advantage that I was homegrown almost. Um, but, but the, re the real part of it was accepting that failure will happen, but at the same time having a very clear message of what we were trying to do.
In terms of, of our, our stations and so on, they're pretty well as they are today. Uh, the headquarters sites, as I say, was Warmer House, Vaughan's Lane, which is in Chester, but not next door to Warmer House, short walk away, and this site. So we had the three headquarters functions. Uh, this was workshops and training. Um, Vaughan's Lane was the control room, and, which, which was a modern purpose built control room and uh, Warmer House, which was the old school converted building, which we'd been in some 48. So we co-located it all effectively on this one site and then sold off those parcels of land. We were able to modify this, this building uh, into a, a training centre, which we seriously needed, because our original training centre was Heswell, which is a little fire station up the wheel. That's where all Cheshire's people were trained. Um, so we needed something better than that. Although we'd been in Warmer House since 1948, our formation, um, we managed to sell that off. It was a bit of a, a bit of a problem because they, there was a lot of planning constraints put on us on the site, um, which re greatly reduced the value of the building. But nevertheless, the amount of money that we did raise managed to build the headquarters on this side. So for the, from a point of view of an operational base, it meant we had training and headquarters on one side. Uh, we'd moved the fire control in here as well. So we released Vaughan's Lane. That gave us land value. We got land value next door to it in the potato field. And we got the money out of, uh, effectively, out of Warmer House. And that paid for this. So we moved for nothing, but ended up co-located on one side. We used to have some pretty awful uh, RTCs up and down the motorway. The area near here, by the way, used to have some bad RTCs. And we used to think some of it was people coming off the motorway and still driving very, very fast um, and not really taking account of it. But over the, over the years, yeah, we, I mean, we used to see more major incidents, 10, 12, 15, 20 pump fires, than... than the metropolitan areas nearby, you know, so, so we, were, we were pretty, unfortunately we were pretty skilled in managing some really big fires um, and some of them have injured firefighters um, but touch wood we, you know, we, we didn't suffer too, too badly in that department, I'm pleased to say. I did attend fires, I attended all major fires. Um, I were, anything over five pumps, they would tell me anyway. Anything exceptional, they'd tell me. And control knew. Control got to know very much the sort of things that had interest me anyway. Um, so it's not just fires, is it? It's, it's all sorts of events. And if there was something peculiar, different, interesting, uh, something that was causing a little bit of a question, a concern, they'd, they'd, they'd talk to me. I'd, very easy to chat to them. Um, they, they knew me. And I used to sleep overnight at one stage. We used to sleep in headquarters and be on call for the uh, control room for all major incidents. So, you know, I, I, I knew the system pretty inside out and had a lot to do with, with those sorts of things. So, yeah, I used to attend all major fires. I used to attend all major incidents. Um, when we had the, um, the two, gas ex the t the two um, IRA um, explosions, you know, the one on the gas holder and then the one in the... Uh, in the main street on Bridge Street. I mean, on the, on the second one, um, I was travelling with the deputy up to Lancashire on a Saturday to, it was a mothering, uh, the, the Saturday before Mothering Sunday. And um, we were going up there for a, a quiz, a, an event uh, at Lancashire Fire. And uh, came back down the motorway. I could tell you a tale there that I was coming down the motorway and I was doing over 100 miles an hour on blue lights coming down. But when we arrived, I mean, that was really, really sad. You know, we arrived, we set ourselves up. Um, I went up onto, onto Bridge Street to see what we could do. Um, we, managed, we managed the emergency communications from three telephone boxes um, up at the square there at the top of Bridge Street because they were secure and we could have um, um, and it was that was that was quite a, a traumatic event a traumatic event for a lot of the firefighters as well because some of them their children and families were well they thought they were the 
because they'd gone into town, you know, with their children, uh, the eldest child taking the younger ones in to get some of the mother for, for the Sunday. So that, that was really bad. That was really bad. The, the event before that in the February, uh, the gas holder, I mean, I walked the site uh, with the bomb disposal officer looking for other devices and we found them. We found them, you know. Um, so that was quite a worrying event. I mean, that holder that went off just across the road from the fire station, you know, it was seconds away from the arriving crews. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's, there's been some very notable events uh, during my period when I was a chief. There's a, a lot of people uh, left in tremendous trauma after a fire. I mean, I know we go, uh, fire service goes, deals with the incident, moves away. And I was always very conscious there's a lot of mental strain and injury left behind. Um, and particularly, I was really concerned about young people. And I mean, the teddy bear, fire ted, was, was really the answer to that. Because the idea was you could give the teddy bear to a child at the job, and they carried it. we carried them on the pubs for that reason. And then subsequently, a trained person could sit with the child and ask where the teddy bear came from, and it would unlock the experience in the child. So hopefully you're dealing with a future trauma and, 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 and solving that. We did surveys after fires. I can remember one in, uh, we had a fire at Pickford's in Chester, and we did a survey after. And in that survey, we found out that most of the people knew what to do in the fire, how to evacuate, how they should do it, and all those sorts of things, because their children had been to school and had lectures in school on fire safety. And they were telling their mums and dads, you know, that this is what you've got to do, this is what we, you know. And you think to yourself, that's such a positive way of doing it, isn't it, really? You just grow up, it's a life skill, you know. No, I think, I think that's good, positive community work, really. And the point is, it'll stop people suffering. And that's what we're about, isn't it? I've been here for 13 years, and we've gone, we've gone through a couple of big restructuring. You know, I'd done one pretty well when I came into post. Then I did another one to try and make us this more flexible organisation that didn't have command barriers, so that we did become more of a, a universal team uh, type approach. And, and we'd done that. And then, you know, I'd been going at it for 13 years. I didn't think they could manage another reorganisation. I love the little oak trees there and the white fences of Cheshire, you know, I mean, I love the county, don't get me wrong, but it's a perfect mix because you've got that and then on this north, northern bank of the Mersey, Shell, as it was, you know, the Stanlow, the complexes, the ICIs, as it was, Rock Savage, Widnes, Warrington, industry, work, crew, Rolls-Royce, rail, you know, You've got this, com and Macclesfield, the other side, the pharmaceuticals and all that. Tremendous, tremendous excitement, really, when you think about it. At one stage, the biggest nuclear industry, with the best car manufacturers in the world, you know, the biggest oil companies in the world, the biggest chemical manufacturers in the world. So you've got that mix, variety, which, which when you're a sort of a firefighter, really is the, the spice of life in one sense, because there's always something to learn, to know, to you know, find about uh, so yeah, I loved I loved all that, and then the people, of course, you know, you realise how strong and good most people are, and most people are. When a chief goes, you, you don't even sit at the old one sat on your shoulder like a parrot, <laughs> and I didn't want to be a parrot on my <laughs> on the guy who followed me. I wanted to go. You know, anyway, so I just wanted to clear the decks and that was it. No, so off I went to Scotland in my merry way. Okay. <laughs>